Why doesn't that work? It's, uh, there's a mathematical problem, and it's a profound one. Um, my colleague David Berlinski calls it the combinatorial problem, or the problem of combinatorial inflation. There are, there are vastly more ways of arranging the characters in question that will generate gibberish then there are ways of arranging those same characters that will generate something functional. So if you start randomly changing things, you're overwhelmingly more likely to find a gibberish se a sequence than a functional one. And as we've actually tried to quantify that, how much more likely, the, the quantitative odds are prohibitive. There's a scientist who worked for 14 years at, at Cambridge University, Douglas Axe. He did his PhD at Caltech, went on to do a long-term molecular biology research postdoc at, at, at Cambridge to try to quantify this question. How rare or common are the functional sequences that would make a new protein or uh, a, a, new, a, a new gene capable of making a new protein? How, how rare are the functional ones in comparison to the non-functional ones? And for a relatively short protein, about 150 amino acids long, he determined that the ratio of functional to non-functional sequences was about one over 10 to the 77th power. Now, to put that in context, there are only 10 to the 65th atoms in the Milky Way galaxy. So what that means is that a random search for a new functional sequence is going to be like looking for one marked atom among 10 trillion, or uh, sorry, yeah, it'd be a, one trillion galaxies of the size of the Milky Way.